What is up guys, Kunio G here, and welcome back to World of Tanks Blitz. And today we are going to take a short overlook at Update 4.1. Recently, Wargaming has just released the update notes for Update 4.1, and today we are going to take a look at the changes and features that are going to be implemented in this patch. First, there's going to be a new marker type called Ray Markers, and it's going to be enabled by default. What are the, these markers about? Well, if, you were, if you've played P the PC version of World of Tanks, these markers are featured there. And what is this about? Well, the ray markers are basically displaying where the shot came from, as usual, like in the old markers. But it will add just how much damage you've received from a shot or a ramming attack. But if you, if you get shot, if the first shot penetrates, but if the second shot doesn't, let's say you engage an auto, a, a tank with an auto order and his first shot penetrates, but his second does not, the second marker will replace the first marker that penetrated and it will be replaced by a gray one. The red one specifies that the shot penetrated and dealt damage but if it's a gray one the shot did not penetrate and will only show just where it came from and how much HP that you bounced. Now this is something that I'm really excited about because at least we're going to find out just how much damage we have received or we have bounced and it really comes in handy. Aside from that a platoon mate marker was added to the game now, what, how does this work? If your platoon mate is in battle, but he isn't before your screen, there's going to be a marker that will show where they are. And it, and, in, and I'm pretty sure that it will come in handy because if your platoon mate is having problems, you can the, ar the arrow will be able to lead you where he is and you can be able to back him up. For damage, that's pretty much similar, but both of you shot, if you guys both shot an enemy, but another teammate hits them, their damage won't rack up to the total damage that you and your platoon mate has incurred on the enemy. This isn't really a big thing because what's important here is that you're able to find out just how much damage you take. And as well as perhaps maybe accurately finding out where the enemy shot came from. This is really a feature that I'm excited about. Aside from that, the damage modules over enemy vehicles will also finally show the crew members which are injured. Now this is going to be coming handy because if you know that the enemy is has like let's say an injured loader, you can be able to utilize it to your own advantage. Now the chain how about the changes to the missions? The missions will be replaced with updated ones and the new missions are going to be split into two groups from tiers 1 to 4 and tiers 5 to 10. I'm guessing that the, tier, the, the missions from Tier 1 to Tier 4 are going to be quite the most easiest to complete, given that they're very lower tiers, and as usual, Tier 5 and 10 may either be average or like difficult levels, but it all depends anyway. Now, what are the mission? Now, there were mission types that were removed, and what are these mission types? Capturing a neutral base in supremacy mode, taking away 60 victory points from the enemy team, capturing two bases in a battle, Destroying two enemy light tanks, spot and keep view of the enemies upon which your allies should inflict 100 points of damage in a battle. Perform a series of two shots and destroy two enemies in a row. Destroy an enemy by causing their ammo rack to explode. Set an enemy fire, set an enemy vehicle on fire and inflict percentage damage to a tier number vehicle in a battle. These are quite some of the hardest missions to complete, especially if you're going to try to destroy an enemy by causing their ammo rack to explode. Now, destroying enemies by their ammo racks are really rare to come by and you can only hope for RNG to actually cause damage to their ammo rack. Setting an enemy vehicle on fire is quite a bit easier. It's also quite a bit challenging but it's very easy as long as you can just flick damage on the engine area, which is the rear, and inflict percentage damage to tier in a battle, to tier number in a battle. Well, I mostly don't have a problem with this, but I guess if some people are having problems dealing damage in a tier number vehicle, maybe it may come in handy. But honestly, the challenges for these missions are really are just being taken out, and basically, it won't offer. But it, and basically, you won't be able to get your skills up onto this game because the more the mission types are harder, in my opinion, the more you'll be able to be more eager to complete the missions. But if you guys are really eager to complete the missions, then maybe these missions which are going to be removed may come in handy. For the matchmakings, only a maximum of three tank destroyers can be seen on each side of the team in raiding battles. 
Now the changes to the matchmaker for raiding battles was also improved. Now, only three tank destroyers will be seen in each side of the enemy team. Aside from that, there are new camouflage added to tier to some tier 10 tanks. Let's go take a look at those at those new camouflage. Now we can see here before the screen the new camouflage. Now we can see here before the screen the, the new camouflage for the tier 10 tanks. For the object 140, we have the strike terror, which looks really amazing and and looks really really Russian like. And we also have the stalwart fighter for the E100, the tireless soldier for the T57 heavy, and quite honestly, the the most amazing and the most coolest camo ever I've seen. The hammer blow for the FV-183. So, these four camouflage are going to be added into the into the game next patch, and they absolutely look gorgeous. So, if you guys are looking for a um, replacement camo, or like you guys are having are already dull with the if, with the camo that is in the game, then these may be just for you. Aside from the aside from the four camo, there's going to be a new rare camouflage called Missile Salvo and the Missile Arsenal, and this won't be applied to just tier 10 vehicles, but also to all the researchable vehicles and the premium tanks. And they also look really amazing here, and especially that miss the Missile Salvo looks really, really nice here. And they'll also provide concealment bonus, and we all know just how good concealment bonuses are. So now that we have taken a look at the new camo, let's, let's find out how many more changes were implemented. The clan and player profiles were updated, and you can now finally go take a look at the past, current, or future tournaments. Um, players will also be able to re send requests to join a team directly from the team profile. Now, these may just apply to some to some tournaments or like to the clans, and I won't delve into this much. But the one thing that I've been waiting for is the Hesh shell on the 105 millimeter. Royal Ordnance L7 that you guys see in the Centurion and the FP4202. Now, the Hesh TL37, the stock Hesh on the L7, or the cheap Hesh as you guys would call it, will be replaced by the premium shell that was re that was previously removed on early patch 4.0. It will be replaced by the premium Hesh that has a penetration of 210 millimeters with a shell price in gold, or hopefully in game credits. Now, I'm honestly, this is a really big buff, and, and honestly, this may be the, just the biggest buff I've seen in the British mediums because it will make the Centurion 7/1 7 7 and the FB4202 highest shell penetration for an HE shell at 210 millimeters. Now, this is really, really big, so you guys might as well continue grinding your cent your Centurions and your FVs because this is really going to be awesome. And in my experience of spamming hash rounds in the PC. I really see that it's really worth it. And hopefully I could be able to do a guide on the Centurion as well as probably a Unicum guide. <laughs> so aside from that, other improvements, basically these are just uh, minor changes and I won't, I don't want to delve on that because all I wanted to focus are us was on the missions, the ray markers, and especially the hash round replacement for the Centurion. Now this is really going to be really exciting for those fans of the Centurion and the FV, including myself, being that the Centurion is one of my fav is my favorite tank of the game, and perhaps maybe it's time to actually grind for the Centurion, as well as for you guys still on the Centurion one. Or if you guys have sold that tier eight Centurion, maybe it's time to buy it back because the Centurion is going to be really really buffed massively, as well as the FV. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If it was informative, please. Give a like down below, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you guys think of update 4.1. Is it a very big change? And just how and what do you think about the buffs, the big buffs on the Centurion and the FP? So thank you so much, guys. You've all been epic, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the battlefield and in the next video.